King of Seas is an action role-playing game set in a procedurally generated pirate world. The story of King of Seas takes place after many years of pirates, merchants, and the navy warring. The navy finally wins and takes control of the seven seas, all but barely wiping out the pirates and their voodoo magic. The navy creates an impenetrable fortress, founding the 800-year-old kingdom of the seven seas and vowing to keep this peace forever. The few pirates who did not fall to the navy fled to the borders and continued their way of life. You play as one of the children, either a boy, Lucky, or a girl, Mary Lou, of the King of the Navy. As a new captain of a ship and coming of age, you embark on your maiden voyage with a task from your father, the King. After accomplishing your mission, and doing a brief tutorial, you arrive back only to find that your father, the King, has been murdered on his throne and you are being blamed. Your ship sunk and you thought left for dead, you are rescued by some pirates and begin your new life as a pirate captain trying to piece together the mystery of who killed your father and work your way back to your home, the Navy. King of Seas is played from a top-down, third-person view. You take control of one of multiple different pirate ships and set sail completing story and side quests across the seas, choosing when to battle and pillage merchant and Navy ships, exploring for loot to upgrade, trading to different ports, fishing, finding buried treasure both on land and from sunken ships, and uncovering the map as you go. There are five different difficulty levels to choose from, with the higher levels not only being more difficult, but adding extra features like dropping all your gear or loot that you need to retrieve again, or adding permanent death on the highest difficulty. Once you complete the lengthy tutorial, you'll be able to go and do almost anything in the game. While this freedom does give you a lot of options on how you'd like to play, it is narrative driven, so to truly progress you must complete the main story campaign. Controlling the ship is fairly easy. You can raise or lower up to three sets of sails to increase or decrease your speed with a tap of the R1 or L1 buttons. There's no camera control, so you can steer only with the left thumbstick and don't need to worry about fiddling with a camera. Each ship is equipped with cannons on both sides of the ship that can be fired with the L2 and R2 buttons, and as you play and complete quests and get more loot, you'll unlock different ship pieces that give your ship voodoo powers that are mapped to the face buttons. The game features some interesting RPG elements that work well with your ship. As you play, almost everything you do nets you XP that lets you level up and unlock skill points. These points can be put into any of three skill trees that enhance different aspects of your ship. This includes things like more damage from your long or short cannons, higher chance at critical damage, more HP, and more. This is a nice touch as it lets you customize the game towards how you like to play. You will also find various upgrades for each section of your ship, the quarter deck, the figurehead, cannons, cannonballs, your four different ability slots, your crew, your hull, and your sails. Each of these pieces come in different rarities and include their own perks for your ship. Things like extra hull life, faster and longer bullet speed, faster cooldowns, more damage, and other things like that. Each piece has fun different themes and will change the look of your ships as you sail the seven seas. As you sail around, you'll come across different merchant ports that you can dock at and do various different things. These are mini hubs where you can go to a carpenter to repair your ship and sell and purchase parts. You can go to a bank where you can store and retrieve any gear you don't want cluttering your precious cargo space on your ship. There's a market where you can buy and sell goods, and a tavern where you can recruit crew members and take on side quests. Each ship that you can purchase has a certain amount of cargo space, which you can hold upgraded parts for your ship, repair kits that let you fix damage and HP while at sea, and various goods that can be traded at the market in these different ports. This introduces an interesting way to try and earn gold in the game, as each port sells all the same items, but will be especially good at manufacturing one item and therefore will sell it at a lower price. They will also be bad at manufacturing another item, meaning they're willing to pay more for that item from you. This means you can go and stock up on one item at a cheaper price, and hope that one of the next ports you go to will purchase it at a higher price. This in theory is a great idea, and I was definitely able to make some huge gains through this method but each port only has one item that they will sell and buy at a modified price, and there's no way of knowing which item it is before docking, meaning you'll spend a large amount of time guessing and checking each port to see if they'll buy something that you have. Plus, while more realistic, the more of an item you sell to a market, the less they'll pay for it. So even though you may have 100 eggs in your cargo hold, after you sell 20 or so, they'll reduce the amount they're giving you until you're not making a profit anymore. Thankfully, the bank does not have any limitations on how many items you can store there, so you can offload all your cargo to the bank and access it at each port for free. However, this can be a very slow process as you cannot simply select all but transfer each item one by one. 
Besides the main story quests, side quests will be what you do with the majority of your time. You can hold up to 10 side quests at one time. They will net you with XP, gold which is used for purchasing upgrades and items from the market, and sometimes upgraded gear for your ship. These quests generally fall into one of three categories. Easy quests that will have you find or purchase a certain amount of goods like rubies, chicken legs, or medicine and bring it to another port. These generally go smoothly with no combat required and the easiest way to complete them is to buy what you need at the market and take it to the mission objective. Medium quests usually have you escorting a ship or taking a package to another port. These are hit or miss on whether you'll get into combat, but for the most part, if you sail straight to your destination, are very easy. The last is hard quests. These almost always will have you hunting down some kind of ship, whether it be a navy ship or a ghostly ship haunting a port. These are the most difficult because they require you to enter into combat, which can be very hit or miss. Combat is an interesting mix of strategy and timing. Each ability you get has a cooldown, and depending on the cannons equipped on your ship, you'll have different reload times between how fast you can fire them. To sink an enemy ship, you'll need to pull up alongside them and fire your cannons. You choose what type of cannonball to fire between three different types. One that does more hull damage to sink the ship, one that does damage to the crew, and one to the sails to slow their movement. For the most part, I found attacking their hull directly was always the best and easiest method to sink them. Lining up your shots can be interesting, as mentioned before, you have three levels of speed that you can set your sails to. Utilizing these different speeds in combat is a must. Slowing down will let your ship turn faster and try and get your next shot lined up, while moving faster will make it harder for your enemy to hit you. The abilities add a nice mixture of strategy to the combat, as you can get various different power-ups to make it easier. Some of these include things like an ability that sends a giant shark to take a bite of damage out of your enemy, a flock of seagulls that surrounds your boat taking some of the damage, fireworks that you shoot into the sky doing damage to all boats in the area, or a speed boost that leaves a trail of fire behind you damaging enemy ships that sail over it. While combat can be exciting at times, there are also a few annoyances that are hard to overlook. Since there are no camera controls, only when your ship is sailing upwards do the left and right triggers match up with your cannons, meaning when your ship is turned around, you need to think which side is controlled by which trigger. This oftentimes had me firing the cannons on the wrong side, either missing completely or damaging another ship I hadn't intended to, bringing them into the fight as well. There are also no indications as to where your cannons will fire, meaning you'll be blindly trying to line up your cannon fire with no idea if you can shoot far enough or if you'll even hit the enemy. This combined with the fact that the enemy AI hardly misses can make for a very unfair feeling fight. Exploring is supposed to be a big part of King of Seas, and at the beginning it can be really freeing to sail around the open waters looking for loot and picking fights as you go. However, there's no mini-map to follow and no on-screen indicators for where your next quest is, so instead you need to pull up a map with the R3 button that shows your location and the quest marked with a red circle. Since there are no other indicators on the screen, you'll find yourself constantly clicking R3 to pull up the map and see if you're heading in the right direction. Like most games, the map is covered in a fog of war, but unlike most, this does not dissipate as you sail around. Rather, you must stop and purchase a map from a cartographer, which only reveals a tiny section of the map around you. This means if you really want to unlock the whole map, you'll need thousands of gold to purchase all these maps, and you'll need to look for and find all these different cartographers. Another thing to keep in mind, if you die, you're sent back to the original port you started the game at, meaning it can take a very long time just to sail back to the areas you were previously in. This quickly starts to feel like a chore, as to even enter the cartographer's place, you must pull up very close to it, stop your boat, enter the island, choose to talk to the cartographer, say yes to buying the map, then choose to exit and go back to your boat. Something this simple turns into a 30 second to a minute process each time to only reveal a tiny amount of the map and there's no indication on the map that you visited this particular spot before, so you may end up visiting it again, only to find out he no longer has a map for you to purchase because you already did. The last big piece of the game you'll find yourself doing is looting gear, gold, and crew members. As you sail around, you'll see little shining objects floating in the water. These are crates that you can sail over to pick up, which include anything from gold, goods to sell at the market, and upgrade pieces. You'll also come across tiny rafts from other sunken ships that you can rescue, increasing the amount of crew members that you have. Besides these, you'll find little rings of fish that once you've progressed far enough in the story, you'll be able to fish at. There are also sunken ships you can loot for goodies and buried treasure on the coast of all the islands. There's no shortage of things you can loot, and these are great resources for XP, gold, and upgrades for your ship. However, much like the exploration itself, these quickly come to feel like more of a chore than something fun and rewarding. 
The loot the sunken ships or any of the loot on land, you must sail your ship right next to it and slow down almost to a complete stop. If you time this wrong, you'll bump into the object and damage your hull. Then add in a short waiting period while your crew searches for loot. These mini activities really break the action and slow down the pace of the game. The sound effects in King of Seas are effective and portray sailing on the open seas well. The cannons have good sound effects and battles are accompanied by great battle music. However, when sailing the open seas, exploring, and at ports, the same songs play over and over again, and oftentimes, whether by design or not, I found that the music stopped entirely for large periods of time. There's no narrated dialogue, except for some cutscenes. I really wish there were sea shanties or something to play as you sail around, as that's one of the things that I love most about the Assassin's Creed sailing games. The game looks good, with a cute, 3D cartoony style all its own. The ships and ports look nice and have a decent amount of variation. The dialogue is all presented in text with 2D caricatures of each person that look pretty wacky and silly most of the time. You can tell they had a style and they stuck with it, which works well in most aspects of the game. The assets are heavily reused though, which I did find a bit distracting. Almost every port has the exact same characters, and all the side quests are given by the same people. Even the cartographer you collect maps from all across the seas is the same person as well. Even the water, which is something you'll be staring at a lot in this game, looks very uniform as all the waves seem to move together. There is a weather system and a day-night cycle that helps break up the monotony of the rest of the game, and thankfully the powers all do have unique and fun looking effects, which helps give some much needed diversity in the game. Getting the Platinum Trophy in King of Seas will require a lot of effort and time. Not only are there difficulty related trophies for beating the game on all the difficulties, including the permadeath one, a lot of the other trophies require you to grind out some of the tasks that just take a long time to do. One such trophy is King of Lands, where you must complete the entire map the first time, meaning you'll have to find every cartographer and buy their maps. What started out as a fun pirate adventure quickly turned into a list of chores that seemed to only be in the game to artificially lengthen the amount of gameplay. The combat is fun, and when initially exploring the world, there are some cool sights to see. However, after seeing the same NPCs at the 20th port you've been to, the slow sailing, the controls, and the grind of trying to uncover the map and loot upgrades for your ship, the novelty quickly wears off, and I found myself trying to complete the story missions as quickly as possible. These sadly even include things that slow down progress, like needing to collect 100,000 gold to pay off a smuggler to help get you back into your home port. I would rate King of Seas as a 4 out of 10. While there is some promise in the combat and RPG elements, some questionable decisions by the developers to artificially lengthen the game and just overall slow pace suck the fun out of it for me. King of Seas will be available on May 25th for PS4, Xbox, Switch, Steam, and good old games. Thank you to the developers for sending me a review copy on the PS4. That's all for now, and as always, Happy gaming.